Hey everybody, welcome into the very first episode of Mike's Are Hot Podcast. I'm Caitlin Vinci, joined by my good friend and colleague, Heather DeBeau. We've been saying for, I don't know, 12 years that we wanted to collaborate on a project together and it's finally here. This is so cool to me. Yes, I am stoked, as you would stoked. say, to be here. That's right. <laughs> Mics are hot. Caitlin and Heather, I love it. And you're right. We've worked together, you know, for a long time ago and now here. And uh, yeah. speaking of which, actually, Caitlin, before we even start, like, let's do just a little throwback since oh, we already dear. brought it up. I um, can't believe you're starting off with this. <laughs> I don't even would know. Be... I don't know if I want to know what this is. <laughs> All right. Well, here's what it is. So you see this? You see this lovely... Lovely collage you put together here uh, oh, from the yes. Speed Channel days. You remember that? That's right. I do remember that. Uh, there's an we ex-boyfriend so cool. in there, too. That's funny. Whoopsies. <laughs> also, uh, hot stuff up here. Smoking. You remember that? Oh, yep. That's too funny. I do. What I made that for your birthday? I think right? so. Yeah. But those okay. are like some good time memories back from, what, 2012? 11? Yes. 12. 12. Yeah. That's when we good started times. Speed Channel together. That is too funny. Well, now we're on a new adventure with Racing America, which I'm so excited about this because we've been talking about it for a while, trying to get this idea to come together. And this is a unique podcast because obviously both of us, the hosts, are female. Also, our producer extraordinaire, Krista Leader, behind the scenes, also a female who's worked in the industry a really long time. It's so cool to to be with her as well and have her be a part of this. Yes, because... Obviously, we've worked together in other different facets. Like, Krista was my producer when I worked for American Flat Track. I know she's worked with you on features and, and stuff with Fox and Speed Channel. And then we're all friends, too, which makes it even better that we get to hang out and then now work <laughs> together. So it's awesome. It is awesome. And we're kind of doing a unique podcast in the sense that we're not doing race recaps. We're not really hitting a lot of the headlines, right, from week to week. These are more themed shows, bigger overarching themes is kind of the direction we're going in for this show. So like, for example, today it's about team ownership in NASCAR. And I'm so excited about our guest, <laughs> Justin whoop, whoop. Marks. Yep. Uh, who I would say is maybe he's like the Dos Equis man, like the most interesting man. He's probably one of the most interesting men in the sport right now. Don't you think so? Oh yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Justin Marks is a big time player in NASCAR and you know, obviously a racer himself and now owns a team and a little bit of a mad, mad scientist, as he would call himself. So I'm looking forward to speaking with him later. But as you said, our shows are going to be themed. So today, new ownership. He's the perfect person to put on this show. But I'm excited that we get to have, you know, like candid conversations with them, like not so much buttoned up and asking the same questions we always hear. Like, let's get to know these guys and gals on a different level and their personalities and have a little bit of fun while we're at it. Yeah, definitely. I think that's what we both were kind of wanting to achieve through this this show. It's just the longer form interviews, not so strictly all of the nuts and bolts we typically have with racing. So Justin, I feel like, is a great person to kick this off. Our second episode is going to have Cole Pern, who <laughs> also one of my <laughs> favorite people it. <laughs> in the business. And, you know, he's been gone for a while now, so it'll be really interesting to hear what he's been up to. I feel like when he was involved in the industry as a cup crew chief for Martin Truex Jr. He was just one of those personalities that a lot of people were very curious about. Yes. I know he does a lot of skiing up there in Canada, so I would love to ask him about that because some of the I pictures know. he posts, it's absolutely beautiful. I don't know I if know. that I would go to some of those locations or if he had to get helicoptered in. <laughs> but I yeah, don't know. We cool. got to ask him. Yeah. Cause yes. I know he has a couple different business ventures in Canada now. So that'll be cool to hear what he's been up to. So that's kind of what we have on tap for the first two shows, which is going to be really exciting. Like we said, Justin Marks joining us uh, later in the program, but we also want to talk about, you know, the week to week, you know, life we live, obviously working as reporters in the industry. You were very busy last week out in Michigan. How was it? It was good. So a very quick trip. I flew there on Thursday. Um, a lot of people always ask, how does your travel go? Or do you get sick of flying every week? And so Thursday in particular, I actually got a message from Delta while still laying in bed. My alarm went off at 7 a.m. and it said, hey, your 1130 flight is now going to be at 2.30. Oh, so no. I got to, yes, I know. But at least I got that before <laughs> I went to the airport because I'm an hour away. So it's oh, just right. a little bit of a mess. So was able to sleep in a little bit longer, so that worked out nicely. And then the flight took off okay, but then by the time I got to Detroit and then drove to the hotel, which was an hour from the airport there, it was 11 p.m. at night. So it's just made for a long travel day. But then the ARCA race on Saturday was 
awesome in Michigan. We had, or sorry, Friday. See, I don't even know what day it is anymore. This is None how hard it is to keep do. track over. It's so hard to, to keep track. Where I am. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so Friday, awesome Friday. race. Um, yeah. The Arca Garage, they are just so much fun. So we had a good time just during the day before the race, but then. During the actual race, there were a lot of comers and goers, a lot of exciting passing, contact. Um, Jesse Love won again, which he's just been yep. killing it, him and Shannon Rush, so, um, which was interesting. The victory lane, I don't know how many know people I was gonna were able to ask see you it. about that. Because uh, yeah. you kind of had, well, he needed like a minute, obviously, to kind of gather himself after some things weren't working correctly on his cool yeah. suit and stuff. Yeah. And so you're kind of having to manage that situation as the pit reporter. What was that like? It was interesting because, so just to give a little background, Jesse told me earlier in the day he wasn't feeling well. And he, I was actually talking to uh, Mark Rett, Frankie Muniz's crew chief, and uh, Jesse walked up and he said, hey, do you guys know anybody that has those nose strips? You know, the ones that athletes right. wear to kind of like, or if you have a snoring problem, you might wear it at <laughs> night to be like, you know, right, so he yeah. was looking for a nose strip. So we're kind of racking our brains like who might have one? We're thinking about maybe some Xfinity drivers that wear them. So I'm going through my head, like maybe just an all guy or like, who have I seen with that nose strip on? Kyle so, Bush. Yeah. He always has Yeah, one. there you go, Kyle. <laughs> Um, but it was, they, Cup wasn't there yet, so we couldn't hit up Kyle Bush for the nose strip. But anyways, we're getting a little too far off on a tangent. But So he wasn't feeling well to begin with. And then during the race, his cool suit failed. And mm -hmm. his air hose came off of his helmet. So he was miserable. At one time, he came over the radio under caution. He said, you guys, I am absolutely miserable in here. So to oh, not no. feel well to start with and then that. So when he got out of the car, um, AMR showed up. His team showed up. They had ice bags. Uh, Gatorade, like, or, you know, whatever drink they were giving him at the time just to try to cool him down. So from my perspective, they throw to me like, hey, let's do this championship burnout victory lane interview on the front stretch for the fans. And Jesse right. looks like he's about to collapse. So I'm trying to fill time by talking about their relationship and the win. And I'm kind of looking at him and I'm going, what am I going to do if he literally can't talk to me right now? And right. luckily his crew chief walked in. So backup plan in my mind, Shannon Rush, you're going to get this interview right now if you can't talk. <laughs> but you're having to think about all those things yeah. in the moment because you're yes. not really sure which way this is going to go. Exactly. It's a lot kind of going on. Mind you, you also have producers in your ear um, kind of saying, hey, just get in there when you can or, you know, so finally Jesse gives me the like, come on over here. So I, yeah, they, I say, yeah, see him do that on camera. He was like, eh, you know, get in. Hey, like get in here, which, which is super awesome because yeah. I think what's really important is being able to build those relationships with these teams totally. so that in those moments I can look at Jesse and he can look at me and trust that if he gives me the eye like it's not happening like I'm about to lose my cookies right now then I'll know or he can say hey come on yes. in here Heather like I'm ready for you kind of thing so it ended up being good we got some good um good answers from him and Shannon was there, like, kind of giving him ice and holding his hand and crying. It was an emotional, like, but it was fun. And so was... I really enjoy those moments, and I'm glad I was able to be a part of it because I haven't done a victory mm -hmm. lane yet like that. So it was good. That's what makes pit reporting so neat, right? Like, when you are literally an extension of that moment because the journalist is the first one there to the competitor, first one at the car, the truck, and just kind of – Getting to be a part of that is such a unique experience. You just yes, can't. And, there's yeah. nothing quite like it. And I'm sure you've experienced it too. Sometimes you become mm -hmm. part of the celebration because shortly yes. after that, Billy Venturini came up and then poured basically a whole bottle of yes. water on me. So they're all excited. Everybody's <laughs> happy for everyone. And of course, our jobs were supposed to be um, impartial, not root for anyone in particular. But it wouldn't have mattered who was there if that celebration had happened the same with any of those drivers in the field. I would have been just as happy to be there and be a part of it. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Like we're, you know, we cover all of these teams, all these competitors. So you naturally are, you're just happy for any of them that find success because you know how hard it is to win races no matter what series you're in. Um, for sure. So yeah, you were out in Michigan. I was watching you from home. Um, yeah, but I had what did you do? <laughs> I had a busy week because I had work on Race Hub and then I went to Eric and Holly Jones's wedding in Michigan. Oh, that's right. How was which, that? It was, <laughs> it was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's the keyword for lots of stories time. that we cannot talk about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I've never been to Michigan, like outside of work, just to okay. go there. And it's so pretty Where this was time the of wedding? year. Uh, it was actually in Flint, uh, Michigan. So oh, yeah. mm -hmm. it was an outdoor wedding, really beautiful venue, very classy. Uh, I love that the two of them. I just think they're such a cool couple. They are on my list to come on this show because. They're both racers. They just have a really unique story, and I, I think they're just 
such a great couple in the in the sport. So uh, that was a lot of fun to see them get married. Weddings just make you feel some kind of way, right? Like you just yes. feel happy, happy, right? <laughs> and ha- yeah. And then you have endorphins, and endorphins and make happy you happy, endorphins. and happy people, happy people just don't kill their husbands. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to go legally blonde on That's us a movie for a quote, second. For the record, <laughs> <laughs> that is going to go over probably ninety percent of race fans' heads. But that is some, from a movie. Good, good yes, and thing. I apologize, I like Holly, because and Eric, because I wasn't trying to say anything about right. your marriage in that moment either. That was bad. <laughs> Oh, that's too good. That's too good. Oh, All right, goodness. so I went to the wedding and I came back and <laughs> I did some more race hub work, but trucks were off. Um, so I didn't actually have to work on air this weekend. But my daughter had graduation from Aww, Cadence, yay. kindergarten. Yes, which you've been around she's my the, kids. She's the best. Quite Her a bit. and Dawson, they're my favorite. I mean, yes. I have a lot of favorites, but I just got to see them recently and they're just mm-hmm. so cute. Yeah, and you know, a preschool graduation it's not even kindergarten it's technically preschool they don't really understand what's going on i mean they do but they don't and it's just it's very cute to watch them in those moments very endearing moments they did a little song um they taught them this like thank you for teaching us how to read and write kind of song thing and cadence was the only one though who knocked her cap off her head during the song (laughs) was she talking with her hands or singing with their hands. <laughs> yeah, because there were like gestures that went with the song, right? Like they oh, were doing all okay. these different. So anyway, she hit her hat. And so then she's like trying to put it back on and keep singing. And her teacher's like, no, 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 it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> of course my kid would do that. Yep. But then they got up and they said nice things about each student. And uh, they said they think she'll be a public speaker someday. Oh, following in mommy's footsteps. I mean, who knows? She's very into racing, though. I will say that much. Um, Yes. Because it's on all the time in our house, right? So, like, naturally, she gravitates toward that. Her favorite driver is Chase Elliott. She tells me that every weekend. Mm -hmm. So, Chase Elliott, he should know he appeals to women of all ages. (laughs) (laughs) Hey. I, yeah, funny. I got nothing. <laughs> because great. she knows a lot of their names and their numbers and their their cars and everything. So uh, she's very into it. But the graduation was good. And then it was back to work again. Like, what have you been doing this week since you got home? Oh, gosh. Um, nothing real exciting. I mean, like, the landscapers came yesterday morning. <laughs> a, we had a, we had a uh, leak in our... <laughs> good thing it wasn't today, right? Because I thought about yes. that. Because I was like, if the landscapers come, that is going to just be a mess. They would have ruined our whole show because when they are here, it is extremely loud because really they got their leaf blowers out and they got their weed whacker out and they're they're shoveling I, over here because I, <laughs> I had a leak in the sprinkler and I usually can fix stuff myself, but this was something that like I went out one day and there was a geyser shooting out of the ground. You guys of, have water <laughs> in Phoenix? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we do, we do. Um, but yeah, it was just. Yeah, people wouldn't know it because we're in the desert. But, yes, we have water. That's Guys good. are coming out. He had to fix that. So landscapers came yesterday. Um, but they mowed the – I usually take care of the backyard, like mowing the lawn myself. But I was nice. feeling pretty lazy. So I said, hey, can you just do the backyard too? Um, That's fair. Yeah, other than that, just kind of getting ready for this show. And I had conference call for ARCA. So kind of a low-key week. But I leave tomorrow to go to Indy. So That's it's right. already back to work again. Back to work again. Just curious, do your landscapers have a schedule? Because I think mine just show up whenever the mood hits. <laughs> whenever they want. So, yes. So he comes every other Tuesday. <laughs> and why I hired him is because he does the neighbor. And actually, the neighbor passed them. Oh, so okay. he now when he comes on that Tuesday, he can just hit us all up at the same time and knock that's it out. Good. So Yeah, and, and that's kind of why I was like, hey, man, uh, you want to you wanna hey, add me to the list? Can you put me on your list? Put me so on his name list. is Raphael. He's super nice, and he took good care of us. So Yeah, but I'm on a monthly plan because I just have him do the front yard. I There's see. not much to do. But anyways, okay. just <laughs> that's curious. it. Because I literally week. text my husband. I go, do you know when they're coming? I was like, if it's today, you need to call and tell them go home. He's like, I don't know. They just come whenever they want. I'm like, oh, that was really helpful. <laughs> yeah. I feel like they were there when I was at your house after Richmond on that Monday. So maybe mark Probably. that down on your calendar and then see yeah. the next time. Maybe there is a pattern, but you're just so busy you don't know what it is. <laughs> I know it's also based around weather. 
Which, speaking yeah. of weather, the race got rained out, of course, yep. the Cup Series. So Mother Nature just, she has a thing against racing, and she's super salty at us this year, and I don't like it. The, through this, this summer stretch has been rough. I mean, I, I feel for them, yeah. because there's been a lot of a lot of rain outs. But that's always yeah. a little crazy for me, because Mondays are typically the day that Blake will assist more with the children. And so yep. when he's gone, then an extra day, you're kind of juggling all of that on the backside. You're having to move all these different things around. All the meetings for work is changing because the race hasn't even happened yet. So we had a pretty busy week at Fox because yesterday was the Craftsman Truck Series Playoffs Media Day, which you're obviously a part of the Truck Series as a pit reporter. So yep. this is something we've done for several years. It's very cool because they all come into the studio. All the different uh, media outlets are there, whether it's MRN and us and, and NASCAR Digital and all the different players are in our building at Fox. And so we got to bring each driver onto the show in pairings of two and they come on the set with us. And it's always funny to see some of their reactions if they've sure. never been to Fox before. They're like, and they see the green screen set and everything for the first time. They're like, whoa. Like, and then they see the teleprompter. And if I'm reading it, like, how do you do that? And I'm like, well, you know, it is a skill. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. Everyone thinks it's so easy, but it actually isn't. No, I don't uh, think I could do what you do. I, I, that's not oh, my forte, I don't think. I'm sure you could. But well, anyway, so it's always funny just to see them kind of taking it all in. But it's just a nice opportunity to also get – you know, their firsthand thoughts as they get ready to start the postseason, the most important time of the year. So, you know, who are you kind of looking at when it comes to that series and who you think is going to be the guy or the Are we team? going champion, the playoff champions at the end? Well, or... we don't have to make a champ pick first. Like, I okay. know I have like a small list of ones that I think are going to be – the ones to watch. It's actually pretty hard to pick this year. I don't feel like there is a clear cut favorite necessarily. Yeah, I I don't know. I've I've sort of had just a feeling about a specific driver this whole time and I think people might say, well, oh, that's the low hanging fruit. That's obvious, but I really do think Corey Heim. Like I think yep. he's going to be the guy to beat. Now, a lot of people would say Zane Smith cuz he's a defending champion and I definitely think they're going to be in the mix and they're going to be hard to beat. And I know they've had a little bit of a rough season where they're either really good or really bad and it's been about 50% either way. Mm -hmm. Um but I know that Zane and his crew chief Chris Lawson are going to be really tough come playoffs because they just they pull it together when the time, you know, when the pressure's on, they they can pull oh, it together. Yeah. But I think Corey Heim and Scott Zipadelli, they've got something good going too. So those are kind of my top two but i don't mm -hmm. want to count out you know someone like carson hosevar you or literally Ty took my i'm so sorry well, well I, great minds not... think alike <laughs> okay i will i will zip it and let you no, talk no no <laughs> i asked you the question but we are yeah. we're in the same train of thought here because those yes. are the three names i had written down hosevar obviously three wins on the year Corey heim and zane each with two apiece i think Corey has just been really strong regular season yeah. Uh, honors got that so the extra points going into the postseason yeah. he seems super and, confident yes and also he was the first driver to ever make regular series champion while missing a race like that's pretty impressive it is and we talked to him a little bit about that the fact that he had to to miss st louis due to illness and just the extra yeah. motivation that kind of put on his shoulders to make sure he maintained that that regular season title. Um, Carson Hosevar, I just think he's so funny. I think he's such a great Did he say anything interview. good yesterday? He said like, he, <laughs> he misspelled his name at the, ra <laughs> at wait, the race what? one weekend. Yes. Apparently he was writing it quickly. I think he said on a piece of tape or something. And he okay. left out the A at, at the end of Hosevar. Hosevar. So, it was just, yeah. And I was just cracking up because obviously he has Shane Van Giesbergen as his teammate coming up this weekend in Indian, I'm like, talk about another name that's hard to spell yeah, and cause, say. Because <laughs> isn't it, I, I thought it was Shane Van Gisbergen. Van Gisbergen. I think it's, we've heard or two Or do we add the Giesbergen? Because it's, I mean, I I've heard it about 16 different ways. Well, you know point, what? We but... can ask somebody today that can give us the answer to that. Exactly. We have a <laughs> we guy. We can clear it up. We can clear um, it all up for everybody. But yeah, so, and it, like you can never count on a Matt Crafton. He's always up there. Like he's always made the playoffs and yep. it, it he actually said to me yesterday, we had to make picks on who was going to make it and who wasn't. He goes, uh, I heard you didn't pick me to advance. I'm like, 
Oh, no. Damn it. We think they don't see things. They see everything. Oh, no. They are <laughs> like, watching. This is they why know. I don't like making things. They know. They know. I told him, I said, listen, sometimes it's just because we need a variety. We can't all say the same names. Sure. Like, it needs right. to be a little different. And he, he wasn't giving me too much of a hard time, but it was kind yeah, of funny. He, um, so at Richmond, I did mm. pre-race interview with him on race day with you. And I had said, oh, you know, this is, you've made the playoffs every single year. Like, can you keep the streak going? And he's like, well, now you just jinxed me. Like, I know. So I then after that. the race, I said, hey, I didn't jinx you. Like, we're good. Hey, we're, we're good. Because I don't want to be on your bad side, Matt. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, please no. <laughs> please no. Like, I like don't you. Need that. You're a great driver. We want you to get that championship. Um, but you know yeah. who else? I we can't not say this name, but Ben Rhodes. Like we just need him to win so we can have another post media like yes. uh, press conference. With oh him yes, intoxicated because that's awesome. And he always has great, interesting things to say every he time does. I talk to him. Anyways, whether he's got beer in his system or not, so exactly. I think Ben would be fun. I do too. And there's a very good chance he could get it done. It's going to be interesting because they kick off their playoffs this weekend out at IRP. And as promised, owner of Trackhouse Racing, Justin Marks, joining the podcast now. So great to see you. I know you're probably one of the busiest men in the entire sport, so we really appreciate you taking some time for us. Yeah, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So we were just talking a bit ago, of course, about Shane, his return to racing this weekend. There has been so many conversations about the pronunciation of his last name. Can you please just clear this up once and for all for myself and Heather and anyone listening on how you say his last name? The easiest way to do it is SVG, <laughs> but, <it's, laughs> but it is pronounced <laughs> Shane, it. Van, Shane Van Gisbergen, not Gisenbergen, not anything else. Giz. Shane Van Gisbergen. Giz. Okay. See, that's yeah. where the, the issues were coming in was the Giz versus, yeah. Okay. So good to know. We got that covered. So uh, your expectations for him and just how incredible it was, uh, his win, of course, coming in Chicago. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if we really ever thought in the process that we were going to be able to win the race it's sort of it's sort of the goal I mean you prepare to be able to go to the racetrack to win but there were so many things that were thrown at him that were new that it was sort of an exercise in managing expectations but the whole you know the idea of project 91 is is you know was born from this sort of dream of getting an, an international driver from a different discipline in victory lane in a cup race. And, and so you sort of build the program around that, but all the tools that we used, the preparation protocol, the people, the support from Chevrolet, everything that we did around the program is the same as the, the, the one in the 99. And it's, you know, with the goal of going to the racetrack with, with uh, an opportunity to win. And, you know, all what you want to do is, put your drivers in positions where it's just up to them, where they're not, they're not compromised or um, have to work around shortcomings in any part of the program. So, uh, you know, as I, I talked about this, but really like as we got to know Shane and as the week went on sort of leading into Chicago, it became apparent that we were sitting on something real special here. And to be successful in these races, it's not just about how fast you can drive the car. I mean, it's it's everything else that makes the difference. It's, you know, you have to have some luck. Strategy's got to be right. It's getting on and off pit road, getting in and out of the box right, um, making good deci decisions and understanding your competitors. So it's, it's like the aggregate of all those things coming together that puts you in the position to win. And he just did all the small things well. I mean, he did the sim session really, really well. He did the pit practice at the shop really, really well. So it was all of those things where it's like, all right, well, he, he's picking this stuff up really quickly and we know he's going to be fast. So you put all that together and, you know, we had a great, great race in Chicago, obviously. And, and he was just a machine came from 18th to first in the last part of the race there, uh, all just on speed and passes. So we were just all like race fans. We were just sort of like <laughs> giddy race fans watching him, watching him do it. So, um, so yeah, Chicago was great. And then there wasn't a plan to run project 91 in any other races this year, but like winning changes everything. And, and, right. and, and, and yeah, and Hans health got excited about it. We want to do another one. And I would say like Tuesday, we went back and looked at his schedule for the rest of the year and mapped that, you know, overlaid that with the cup schedule to see if there was another opportunity to do it. And, and Indy fell in a really good spot. So why not go try to do it again? So, um, but I mean, as far as expectations go, uh, you know, I think we, can win again and and it's uh, again it's going to be you know a matter of preparation and execution and just doing all the right things you know this week will be a little bit different because no one had been to chicago it was really in shane's wheelhouse a street course he was probably you know the most experienced street course racer in the field now we're going to a track that everybody in the in the field has been to 
you know, a few times already. They already understand the nuance of the racetrack, how the restarts work, where the passing zones are, all that. So, so it's going to be a more even playing field. Uh, probably means it's going to be a tougher race for Shane. Uh, but they're only going to get tougher as he gets more and right. more uh, experience in the Cup Series. So we're just really fortunate to be able to put him in that position and support him and just sort of be race fans and see what happens. Yeah, that's exciting. I'm, I'm ready to see SVG in action, also in the truck, because I think a lot of people yes. are like, oh, I don't know, he's going to be good, he's going to be bad. Well, in a couple of days we'll know, but I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, so I was at a dirt track, I think, somewhere during Summer Nationals last year, and I just happened to pick up this nice um, <laughs> Speedway magazine, and look at that yeah. power stance you got going there. It is there, a but... power stance if I ever saw yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this that's... was from, let's see, August of last year, so just about a year ago. But there were some interesting things you said in here. One of them, which kind of uh, we were just talking about SVG and him as a driver, but you said, when I think of drivers, I have four major boxes that need to be checked. They need to be humble, have experience at the cup level. They need to be people that, when put in a position, have won and will win. And then they need to have stories. So obviously, SVG didn't have the cup experience, but you definitely have boxes checked for drivers. But what I want to know is your team is really fun. I mean, yes, just overall, anybody fun. on your team, whether it's a road crew member, a pit crew member, pit crew. people that work in the office. So what are the boxes that need to be checked for people that want to work for track house? Because I may or may not want to be a part of the team because you guys <laughs> have fun all the time. <laughs> well, that's a great question. I haven't been asked that question before. I mean, you know, I, I think obviously we want talented people. We, we want people that w one of the things that, that I said early on when we were just sort of ideating around building this company is that we don't want anybody in the company, no matter how good they are, how experienced they are, that, that aren't bullish on NASCAR's future, that don't think the new car is really cool and exciting, um, that, you know, we don't want people to complain about the schedule or, or that was something that, that we immediately addressed with, with the workforce, you know, from a hiring standpoint, when we first got started, but then also through the CGR, uh, acquisition, you know, it's we just want people that love what they do and they're and that are fans of the sport and love the sport there's a lot of people that work in this industry that are very good at what they do that just bitch and complain all the time about everything and i don't so understand true. it i just don't understand <laughs> yeah. it i mean it's just it's too cool of a thing we do to go to the racetrack and race in front of seventy five thousand people and complain um you know, complain that they don't think NASCAR is doing a good job or they miss the days where they could design and hang bodies in the fab shop or, you know, they don't like this, they don't like that. So so we just, we don't want any of that in the company. And I think if you get rid of those elements, you just have a group of people that are passionate about what they do and, and come to work motivated every single day to try to do do the best job possible. So, I mean, I say I would say those, those are probably the biggest boxes to check. And then from just sort of a management and culture standpoint, you know, I think it just it starts with the tone that management sets. I think it starts with the tone that we set at the top that that like this is the coolest thing ever. This is just like the coolest thing that we all get to do. And that if we don't stay loose and just kind of have some fun, you know, do our jobs, work really hard, but not take it so seriously that there isn't a life enjoyment factor, a, a job enjoyment factor there. Because I think if you're smiling and you're having fun and you're staying a little bit loose, that you'll tend to do your job better. Um, generally. So, you know, when I, when I go to the racetrack, when I go to the shop, it's, it's, you know, I, I try to have fun with everybody. We, we try to do a lot of really fun company events and we do track house Tuesdays and we do family nights and we do a lot of fun things on the floor. Like we had a mariachi band playing on the floor <laughs> while all the guys were working after Daniel won. I mean, just like fun stuff like that. Every time we get a top 10 finish, one of our pit crew guys, Cap Houston drives a, rides a, oh, yeah. an old, an old, uh, ice cream delivery bicycle around the shop and hands out ice cream sandwiches to everybody. It's just, it's like that kind of stuff. Just, you know, having fun with the pit crews on pit road right before the engines get fired and kind of setting that tone from my standpoint that like, let's just have some fun. I mean, let, you know, there, there's so much pressure in this sport. We get pressure from Chevrolet. We get pressure from our sponsors. Uh, there's a high demand of, um, of excellence that, that sort of is in, is in and around everybody all the time that if I have a choice to amplify that pressure by putting it on my workforce versus, hey, that pressure's there, you put it on yourselves, you know, I'm here to support and be a cheerleader and, and be a fan of you guys is sort of the lane that I've fallen into and it's just proven to be, you know, pretty effective so far. 
Yeah, I mean, we've always noticed just how your team kind of operates to the beat of its own drum, which it's very, very refreshing to see just from the personnel to even your at track presentation with your haulers and everything you guys have going on. What's been the industry's response kind of to the way you're doing things? Well, I mean, it's been overwhelmingly positive. I mean, I think people are, you know, generally excited that there are, you know, not just us, but there are new teams and teams that are sort of developing their presentation, obviously, you know, 2311 coming in, but then, you know, RFK has, has done a great job with their presentation and, and you know, legacy. And so, you know, it, it's, there's certainly been uh, a lot of positives to it because, because people understand that in our sport to be able to be relevant and to grow into the future, we have to be brands and we have to, we have to, sort of constantly audit the way we do things, the way we look, the way we engage with fans, the way we drive value for our sponsors. We can't just, you can't do the same thing forever and expect to just always be successful. And so that, that right. sort of fundamentally guides, um, you know, what we do. And, you know, the competitive response has been, has been good to see. I mean, I, I think there's been some, you know, I was hoping with what we did and the things that we do that it was going to inspire creativity of other teams to look at themselves and to go through their own creative thought process about how to do things differently. There, there's been there's been less of that than 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 I was sort of hoping. Um, you know, there's been some some imitation, uh, which is fine, but it's it's you know we really want to kind of set we want to set an example, I think, for other teams to look at themselves and say, what can we do to continue to be additive to the sport and, uh, you know, and develop our, uh, our story and our engagement with the fans and all that. And I think if, if people respond to that and, you know, the, the whole game gets elevated. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's been good. I think it's, I think there's some people that don't think it's very cute and those are probably the people that I mentioned earlier that, that aren't track house type people. Um, <laughs> Which is fine, but but you know it's a big part of a big sort of core uh, part of our DNA is the fact that you know, and I've said this before, is that it's for us to be successful. My name can't be anywhere on the team. It was you know, it's not going to be Justin Marks Racing or Marks Racing or something like that because you know I don't I don't bring any cachet personally to something like this that a Rick Hendrick or Roger Penske or somebody like that would that we want to build a brand that's bigger than every one any, any one person so instead nobody does anything for me in the company they do it for track house they do it for the track house vision for the track house opportunity in the sport and I think that's what's solicited a lot of the the great work that our people have done and our and our results in the industry but to answer your question you know it's 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 been very positive it's, you know nascar loves it uh, it's inspired i think some of the other teams to 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 look at things differently and do some things differently and i think it's been you know hopefully additive to the industry i love that yeah i just like the vibe i mean I do too. after it's dover yeah after the dover uh, rain delay i know your uh, number one crew. I mean, they might be some of the funniest guys I've ever been around down there. But when they made the the camera and the headset and the and the <laughs> monitor, and they were trying to pretend like they were Jamie Little, I'm not gonna lie. I may or may not have been responsible for that because we had a conversation at Fire and Ice in Dover, and it turned into a whole thing. But just being around people that are happy that enjoy what they do, it really reminds us and myself. Like you're right. We do. We have a really cool job. Not everybody gets to do what we do, and to be in that moment at the track with all the fans around, it just makes for a good day. So whenever I see them, I'm just like, I get pumped just to be around them. So it's fun to uh, see you guys having fun for well, sure. Well, that's. I mean, that's really that. That's kind of the the license that we've given them. I mean, is and that's everybody in the company is is, you know, we've we have we've given them the ability to to be creative and improvise and and take advantage of the moments that they find themselves in, you know, as long as it doesn't affect work. But it, it actually helps the work. I mean, those guys yeah. have found a really nice balance between, you know, being great brand ambassadors and representatives of Track House and, you know, amplifiers of like our personality and our culture and who we are. But then when it comes down to it, they're one of the best pit, you know, pit crews on pit road, too. And they can really, really perform in those moments. So as long as, you know, as long as you can do those things and then be able to be effective at your job, there's no... Um, you know, there's no there's there's no limits that I put on them really. I mean, you know, our sponsors love it. The fans get a kick out of it when they're walking by and they see it. And they're like, what is, what's that all about? And, but <laughs> I mean, people notice it, and it's yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, it's the go it's, it's the it's spotter spot goggles. <laughs> yeah, it's track house. It's what we do. We have fun. I love that though. It, yeah, it's you guys are very unique in, in all the right ways. Um, and speaking of unique, the jockey spot that came out recently. <laughs> um because they're on board with you for the next couple of years this was one of the funniest videos i've seen done with a team owner and drivers behind the scenes what was that like filming that <laughs> uh well the content team did a great 
great job with that. I was, I'm so stoked with how it came out. I mean, you know, that, that video has got, it's about to touch a million views on Instagram. I bet it is. Uh, which, yeah, <laughs> which is, which is great, great for, for Jockey. So when I hired um, Dean Stoyer, who's our chief brand strategy officer, uh, you know, I, I said, go build. What I want to do is I want to build the greatest team embedded, you know, content group. Uh, in the sport because, you know, it's, it's a social media world and it's what people pay attention to. And, and we have to be great ambassadors for our sponsors and tell their stories and, and show their personality. And that it was those, they just knocked it out of the park. We've got seven or eight incredibly talented content people. And, and I jump into the Slack channels with, with ideas and inspiration and, and, you know, we find stuff on the internet from inspiration from other sports, from uh, entertainment things. And we just try to come up with, with really great ideas. And I think that, that, that jockey spot is going to be just the first of, of a lot of really, really fun stuff that we do because we have to, we have to be, it's more than just logos on race cars. And, and, and it's a very, very competitive environment out there when brands invest in sports and entertainment and social media, there's just so many places that they can spend their money and the way that you show them value for their spend has to be dynamic. It has to be creative. It has to be culturally relevant and entertaining. And, you know, I think some of, some of those, those teams that are sort of stuck in the, you know, well, the service that we offer is logos on race cars and, and pit passes and driver meet and greets. And that's what we do are going to find it more and more difficult to, to get the partners because the partners demand so much more than that. So that jockey spot represents, you know, an evolution inside of track house of really trying to understand what moves the needles for our, for our partners and, you know, the, the type of story they want to tell and for us to be a, a compelling and authentic and entertaining conduit for that story. Uh, you know, that, that spot came out of a, t- a two day meeting with jockey, with our content team and with Dean, just understanding the campaigns that they're planning in their pipeline and, you know, how they they want to uh, tell their story, how that's going to develop over the next couple of years and us being very, very consistent with that. And so we're doing that with all, everybody, we're doing it with, you know, freeway insurance and worldwide express and everybody, everybody has a different goal that they're trying to achieve or start starting those talks with Anheuser-Busch right now. And so, you know, we, we want to be more than just race cars. We want to be great marketing partners. And, and that jockey spot was really, it was really a lot of fun and they did such a good job with it. Now we, I, I did that and I'm like, you know, it, that thing obviously resonated and everybody's talking about it. Like I'm going to go take some acting classes and, and, and we're going to see how far we can take this thing. I mean, yeah. I think scripted content is probably a, you know, great opportunity for track house in the future, just to be continue to be great partners, um, for our, for our sponsors. Yeah. Your Oscars are in the mail. Good job. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you obviously have a lot of ideas and these ideas have come from, I'm not really sure where, because I'm, some of your ideas are really good, but you mentioned you run a lot of them by Ty Norris and sometimes he shoots them down. So can you give us a, maybe an idea that you've had that didn't make it with the team that Ty said, yeah, yeah, we're not going to do that. That's just not enough. Um, I don't know if I can remember them because as soon as they get shot down, they leave, they leave, I just, they leave my head and they never come back and I just okay. move on, move on to the next thing. But it's, it's not, it's not as much content stuff as it is, you know, direction for the company is, you know, how, right. how do we, how do we grow? Um, you know, we've, uh, I have I have a lot of ideas for how to scale the business, how to utilize the resources, the infrastructure, everything that we have inside the building to find to find new pieces of business that we can do. And you know, I I I have ten ideas a day, and so sometimes when when I take it and they say, well, that'd just be too much of a lift, or you know, then I just okay, I just move on to the next thing. So it's hard for me to find those because they're just gone <laughs> now. <laughs> Because the next 10 have already moved in, basically. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Yep. Yeah. So Pitbull obviously is a big part of your team and everything. What is one of the best stories you have of Pitbull and, and interaction with him or something that's happened with him along the way? Gosh, I mean, we, uh, you know, one of the best, one of the best moments that we had with him was the night before the Daytona 500 in 2021, our first race. We, we got a, um, we got a room. Uh, at the at the Daytona Hotel that's right across the street there we had a big dinner and you know all the drivers and the partners and and everybody came and and we had a big party that the you know the drivers had to go home early from obviously but it was uh you know when you when you when you hang out at dinner and after dinner with Armando it turns into a it turns into a late night um I that was imagine. that was yeah that was that was really really fun and then when we raced in Homestead we um 
the night yeah the night after the the homestead race we stayed and we did a we, on monday we did an event at the slam school there with the car and, and with daniel and we went to his house in the keys he's got a house outside of key largo on the water there and uh it we showed up and there was like 30 or 40 people and a big oh, wow. catered dinner with a chef and all this stuff and we had <laughs> We had a big time. I don't remember going back to the hotel. I think Ty had to check me in when we got when we got back to the hotel that night. But um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. He's a super super fun guy, an engaging guy, um, very industrious and entrepreneurial. He's invested in a lot of different companies. He's he's a great part of great part of the team and a great ambassador for us. We just met with him last week at um, at the at a hotel down in down in Miami and. We talked about the future, about, you know, ways for him to get more involved in the future. Uh, you know, we're, we're sort of in the early stages of, of building an offshoot of track house that's going to be in the music industry. So he, he helped kind of build the framework around that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's, he's a great partner, a lot of fun. And if he's starting, you know, down the music road, I keep saying I want to be employed by track house. I do rap on the side and I write raps occasionally. Oh so no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> for fun. That is not something fun. I was going to expect. <laughs> No. Send me Maybe one day I'll, I'll share one Send of my raps. But we'll, yeah. yeah, I know, right? I, I have to put one together. I have to put one together, but that'd be fun. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so let's go back a little bit to more serious. But what do you think is something that just in your team ownership so far that surprised you about being an owner in the Cup Series? Just It could be something serious or something small, big, just something that surprised you about what you do as a team owner. Well, I mean, I would say that, that nothing has come as, as a huge surprise because I've been in this garage area for a long time. I mean, I've raced, you know, raced for 20 years, raced for 10 or 12 in NASCAR. And, and so I was, you know, very, I did all that with, with an eye a little bit turned towards the business side, knowing that I wanted to, to go that direction one day. So as a driver, I was always involved in, in the business side of it. I was always asking questions about how, how things run, about, you know, how, how the relationship with NASCAR is. You know, I would say it wasn't a surprise, but one thing that I'm having to navigate really is the politics in the garage area. Um, so fun, I'm, I'm sure. I am, yeah, <laughs> it's, it is challenging. Um, I've been lied to. I've been manipulated. Um, I have been, I've had great concepts around Project 91 that were strong-armed and taken from me. Wow. Um, and that that is something that that I didn't, I expected some of it, um, and I think some of it was a little unexpected because I thought there would be a, a little bit more sort of appreciation and partnership for for me as a new owner in the sport. But that probably just comes with, you know, showing up and and moving the needle a little bit for things and 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 for people. So that that's been something that has been a little bit difficult for me and and continues to be difficult. I'm getting better at it, but I'm not. It's not in my skill set to do to operate that way. Um, you know, there's no, there's no ego. I, I just, I, I believe enough in, in what our opportunity is to not feel like I need to try to take something from somebody else in the sport. I think there's enough to go around, but the, but you know, from a creativity standpoint, from an opportunity in the world standpoint, there's enough to go to around, to go around, but there are limited resources in the garage area and people compete over drivers and they compete over sponsors. And, and so I've been a little disappointed that, that more teams have not, invested in their stories and their sales efforts and put that got gone out into the world to tell their stories they, they get hyper focused on trying to take what's already there in the garage area from somebody else and so that that's been that's been a bit disappointing for me but um but i i didn't i didn't necessarily not expect it so we're just sort of reacting to it staying firm with you know what we believe to be the right way to do things and and um and operate that way so that's been a bummer but part of the deal well, thanks for sharing that. That's yeah. that's kind of surprising. I had no idea. It, it is surprising. Um, is there someone? Is there another team owner though that you talk to a lot in the business? Is someone that you is a mentor, perhaps? Because obviously this is the third year of Trackhouse, but I would say it's still pretty early on in your career as a team owner. Is there anyone when you're going through situations like the one you just described that maybe you, you've leaned on a bit to help you with some of that? Well, I, I think for for that, not really, because because that's typically where some of that comes from. Right. So it's like, okay. it's just who, who can you trust? And, right. you know, I've, I've really leaned into my relationship with NASCAR. I mean, I, I really believe that, you know, we need to be working 
very closely with them as partners, not not on opposite sides of, of a line in the sand or anything like that. I think it needs to be, that relationship needs to be approached from a, a spirit of collaboration and partnership. And I think ultimately, if the sport does better, all the teams are going to do better. And I think that we can really work together instead of, you know, making demands from each other and, and things like that. So I've I really leaned into my relationship with Steve Phelps and with Ben Kennedy and Steve O'Donnell and, and those guys to understand what's important to them, what their definition of success is uh, in a lot of different ways. And, and, you know, it's been a great relationship. I mean, they've, they've done a lot for us, um, you know, being able to approach that relationship that way. So I think other than that, I mean, you know, I've had great conversations with Denny Hanlon just because we're going through the same, the same kind right. of thing, sort of, you know, building teams and looking towards the future. You know, I've got a lot of FOMO right now because I wanted really badly to build a shop like he's building right now, which is, which is amazing. It's going to be an incredible facility, something that I want to do one day. Um, from the business standpoint, you know, I, I talked to Steve Newmark a lot at RFK Racing. I think he's a fantastic executive. Uh, he's, you know, comes from a, lo a private equity background, um, and so he really understands the business side of it. He's got a good relationship with NASCAR. You know, there's a lot of things that I will lean on him about. Um, otherwise, I mean, I, I've got mentors outside of the sport that I, that I really probably lean, lean the most on because, you know, when it comes to proprietary racing stuff, I can, I can have those conversations with people. But when it comes to culture, workforce management, business growth, responsible, you know, being economically and fiscally responsible with the business, you know, all of that kind of thing, I've, I've got, you know, I've got some great relationships in other industries that I lean on um, pretty heavily. I was actually just going to ask you that because you grew up in an entrepreneurial household. Your dad was the uh, founding managing partner of Celesta Capital. He served as interim um, CEO of Tesla. So I'm sure he's someone you lean on. Is there any advice that you could share with us that he's giving you that you've really taken from him? I mean, for me, it was really just growing up. You know, what's really helped me it was growing up in Silicon Valley and, and you know, seeing uh, uh, companies come in and disrupt industries, challenge the status quo and the, and the, the way industries operate and bringing new fresh ideas. That, that really served, you know, it, our, our business for a long time, the family business is private equity, so we're investing in those companies that have new technologies or new brands um, and change the way things are done. And a big one of that was, was GoPro. I mean, I got to meet Nick Woodman, the founder of GoPro, and, and he's a fantastic entrepreneur, a very, very creative guy. And, and basically, you know, the, the, the action camera industry kind of invented the action camera industry. And, and, you know, so, and that, you know, Sony and these companies had to respond to, uh, to him as an entrepreneur. So I had a front row seat for all that stuff. And that, that really, I think, painted a different picture of the world for me. It allows me to come into a sport like NASCAR that traditionally has done things the same way for a long time and approach it from the spirit of, of you know, is that, is that the best way to do things, right? Why do we do it that way? Well, that's because that's the way we've, we've always done it. That's a bad answer, right? I mean, like, <laughs> do we have to do it that way because it's the best way to do it? And I think when you actually look at it, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of different opportunities out there. And so I think, you know, being able to, grow up in that industry and to see that stuff has really given me a, um, I think a competitive edge when it comes to track house in the industry. I mean, like for instance, we just, you know, in two, 2021, you know, entertaining, uh, guests, CEOs and executives of our sponsors at the back of the haulers, you know, that that's where everybody would just stand and hang out for the two hours before the race. And I was sitting there going like, where, where, why are we doing this? Where we, well, there's nowhere to go. It was like, we're all just sort of standing around kind of just waiting. And I was like, let's bring some music in. Let's put some, like some screens on the back of the haulers. I mean, if we're going to sit here and entertain, um, this is like the most boring place to do it is the back of the hauler. So let's make the back of the hauler a vibe. And so like at Talladega and Nashville this year, we had live music at the back of the hauler. It's just, you know, those kinds of things just come from being able to look at the world around you and, and ask questions. Why do we do it this way? And how can we do it better? I yeah. love that you've challenged all the norms in racing. You've done a very good job of that. You know, and a lot of times um, with females working in the industry who are also parents and stuff, they always ask how they juggle everything. Men don't get asked that question as often, but I am very curious about that for you because you're a husband, you're a team owner, you're a father. You have a lot of things going on. How do you balance it? Maybe you can help teach me because I can't oh. figure it out. Yeah, and I have zero. I cannot help at all. I don't know how to do scenario. this. So Please help me. You guys got to help each other here. Single yeah, no kids. I, you I think it's probably it's. 
I can't answer that question because I'm going through that process myself. I mean, I it's it's hard. I mean, it, it's hard to balance it all, especially when you've got a company that's at the t- at this stage in its life cycle where it's so new and and it needs it re- needs and requires so much of of my attention. But you know, it, it it starts having a good support system at home. I mean, you know, every I, I travel every week at least once, probably twice every single week. Uh, a lot of meetings and it's a lot of time time away from home. You need to have a partner in the house that that um, understands that grind and understands that, you know, you have to do those things, you know, with where track house is today. And I've got that luckily. So, you know, I've, I've, um, I think that's, that's a big part of it. I mean, as far as mental balance, I mean, it's, um, it's hard. I'm not good at it. I mean, it's really, really hard to, to turn it off because it's, it's, it's not just racing. I mean, it's a lot of things that I'm, I'm interested in and, you know, investments here in Nashville. I mean, I've got four business concepts in development right now and and you know it's whether all four of those will come to fruition or none of them I don't know but I mean we're going through the process of building out you know business plans and you know market analyses and things like that so um it's uh it's hard I don't have the answer to that Caitlin because I'm just (laughs) I'm trying to figure it out myself I all I know is that I'm I'm 42 and I've got a lot of energy and I've got a lot of passion and so I think (laughs) I think it, it you know I have to lean into that at this stage in my life right now I compared you earlier to the Dos Equis man, the most interesting man oh, in the geez. world. You're the most interesting man by far in racing. Uh, <laughs> one final thing before we let, let you go, because I know we're getting close to the time. Uh, we're asking our guests what fuels you, right? What is the thing that motivates you the most? Because obviously at a young age, uh, you wanted to pursue driving. You knew race racing was, was something you wanted to be involved in, but then you became motivated in the business aspect of it too. So what is the thing that fuels you the most? Uh, I would say risk. I would say I that I'm that. naturally yeah. attracted to risk. I'm a risk taker. I love it. I think on the other side of risk is, you know, authenticity. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I just like to do hard things, hard, risky things. And I think that's what, that's what attracted me to racing in the first place. It's why I spent a few years, you know, late in my racing career, climbing in the mountains, you know, doing big climbs in South America and Nepal and the Canadian Rockies. I just, I liked getting myself uncomfortable. I like being uncomfortable. I like uh, taking risk um, because I think it's what, it's how you live your most authentic life. When you're, when you're uncomfortable, you learn a lot about yourself. And, you know, it, it, same thing on the business side. It was incredibly, I launched Trackhouse. We had like no sponsorship. I mean, when we started Trackhouse in 2021, I did not know how we were going to pay for the season. When we went to <laughs> Daytona, we did not have enough money to finish the season. And, but we just, we bet on ourselves and we just bet on the story. And, and, you know, we came out of the gates and, and after the second race of the, of the, of the year in Homestead, I got a uh, just a random unsolicited phone call at nine o'clock at night from Marcus Lamonis, and he bought all the races for the rest of the of the 2021 season. And and you know, CGR. I mean, we we made the acquisition of CGR without a Chevy contract. And if we if I couldn't get that Chevy contract signed, it was going to drastically change the operations of that company. I don't know how we were going to do it, but it got done. I just naturally get attracted to difficult, risky things because. Um, that's what, that's what I, like I said, I think that's how you live the most authentically. And I think where you get the most rewarded, I mean, you have to take risks to, to chase your dreams and, um, I will continue to do it. That is very great advice. I think for anyone listening, I love that perspective. Uh, Heather, do you have anything else you want to say to him before we let him go? Just tell him how awesome well, he is. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just inspired by everything In you just awe, said. Literally. So I feel like I need to go <laughs> skydiving or something. Cause that's something I've always told myself, like, I'm not, I'm not down for it. Yeah. I don't want to do it, but Hey, I got to get uncomfortable. I got to yeah, go take a risk. Go jump out of a thing. plane. <laughs> hey, down in Eloy, Arizona is one of the best places yeah. to go. So I could just go there right now. A couple hours. Well, I'll be there. Start, start with a cold plunge. That's oh, the, there that's we go. The, that's oh, the, yeah, yes. that's the be- that's Baby the best step. way to start. Is that's the best way to start? Fill fill a fill a bathtub with ice and yep. sit in it. It's uncomfortable. You don't yep. want to do it, but when you get out the other side of it, you're glad you did because you feel so much better. Okay, I'll start there. Thank you. <laughs> Congratul- <laughs> congratulations to both of you guys too on this uh, on oh, this podcast. Thanks. It's awesome thank to be here with you both. Yes, thanks thank for being so our much. first guest. Yeah, yeah, for being it's here. It's an honor. Really appreciate it. I always love interviewing you, hearing your perspective. I seriously am in awe of everything you've achieved. So we appreciate your time very much. You're welcome. Thank you both. Well, that was an amazing conversation if I've ever heard one. I mean, I I can't believe all the things that he shared with us and how candid he was. I I really find him to be one of the most interesting people I've ever met in this entire industry since I've been in it, honestly.
For sure. I mean, even just one of the most interesting people I've just ever met in life. Like, yeah, I wasn't. Jo- I mean, I was joking about how I'm inspired to go jump out of the airplane and everything. But I genuinely <laughs> mean that. I genuinely mean like, what am I doing with my life right now? Like, what else could I be doing? Right. How could I be doing things differently? What ideas can I come up with? Could I start a business? I mean, that was just really motivational for me personally, just hearing yes. all the things he said, like, wow, just so cool. It really is. And he truly has been kind of a pioneer and he's such a visionary when it comes to how he wants to do things with his team and all his other side elements that come into track house, the brand. So I'm just so curious to see what else is on the horizon for him. I feel like he, he could do anything. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Big things, big, big things are big coming. Things. I feel like I don't even know what they are, but they're happening. I can see it. <laughs> yes, they are. And big things are of course are happening in the sport because the playoffs are starting for the truck series and the cup series series only has a few races left until the cutoff IRP this weekend. Yep. What are you most looking forward to? It's our pit whip time, which backstory on explain what a pit whip is. I know, but you get to, you're the pit reporter. Go ahead. Okay. Well you were too. So, but pit, 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 that's, that's what happens when you can't talk. You've been talking for a while. You get tongue tied. Let's start that over. Okay. Yeah. Pit whip is when right before the race starts, usually during the pace laps, they go down to the pit reporters to give their last you know, thought of what's going to be going on during the race, whether it's a breaking story or just a driver they're talking about. So we will do on our show a pit whip of what we're looking forward to um, coming up over the weekend. So ours is going to be talking about Indy. So obviously you just mentioned it. Trucks playoffs are happening at IRP, also the ARCA race. So I will be there pit reporting the ARCA race. And then I have a dual role. I will take the headset off and will help one of the other pit reporters on pit road and spot for them um, and just help uh, help them. So I think I'll have either Amanda or Josh, I believe. I believe Jamie Howe's with me during ARCA and then Amanda Busick and Josh Sims are on pit road for the truck race. So a uh, busy day for me on Friday at the track, but oh, yeah. I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> I wouldn't either. I will be in the studio for pre-race, of course, for the truck series race day. David Reagan and Todd Bodine will be with me on that show because Trevor Bain's actually going to be in the booth for the ARCA race. Um, But yeah, I'm looking forward to starting the playoffs there uh, for trucks because it was such an eventful race last year. If you remember, there were so many things happening, so much activity throughout the course of that race. Grant Enfinger, of course, was able to win, so he will be looking to replicate or duplicate that come this weekend. Also, I just love Indianapolis. It's such a cool motorsports town with a rich, you know, history and heritage in the sport. I think it just has a very unique energy that whole venue does. Love going there. Love going to St. Elmo's. I'm supposed yep. to go there. So I'm looking forward to that because cliche or not, I'm getting one of those shrimp cocktails and that's what's happening. I like it. I like it. I'll come with you if I'm still in town because I haven't that's decided. Right. I might stick around and hang out. Listen, I think you the need race... to make a decision. It's it's <laughs> like know. 48 hours from now. <laughs> I know. Please I will, stay. I, sometimes the best decisions are made last minute. Like I'm going to take a risk like Justin take said. Take a risk. Show up. Yes. I'm just going to show up and I'm going to decide, hey, I'm not getting on my flight. I'm going to stay for Sunday and watch the cup race. Or hey, I'm not. Or hey, maybe I'll just take a flight somewhere else and go on a mini vacay. Who knows? Maybe you should. <laughs> if we learned anything from Justin Marks, it's what can come from taking calculated risks. So exactly. I like that idea. Same. All right. So our next guest for the podcast, um, Mike's are hot here on Racing America is Cole Pern. So we look forward to that happening down the line next time i'll see you in a few days out at indy this is so much fun episode one done boom mic drop mic drop (laughs) mics are hot mics are hot